Hello, beekeepers. My name is Joe Kovaleski. I am here to give you a short presentation on rendering your beeswax, background on beeswax and how it is made to begin with. This is my bio here on the page. I've been keeping bees for approximately 28 years. Uh, right now we're keeping around 100 colonies. Uh, we have been beekeeping starting out with a Boy Scout beekeeping merit badge project with our younger son. Uh, we do a lot of teaching to various groups and beekeeping groups and schools, 4-H, garden clubs, and so on. You can read my bio, and if anybody wants to contact me, you can contact me by my email there on the bottom of the page, or you can text me on the phone number that is there. With that ado, we will get into the presentation. Again, our talk is a quick look into wax rendering, a look at beeswax from the starting point in the hive through the process of turning it into a usable finished product. Again, nature's best is for beeswax. For beeswax and nice beeswax is a goal of all beekeepers as one of the excellent byproducts of the beehives. This is just a few pictures, a little collage of some of the pure beeswax candles as they are made and getting ready for display at our fairs and festivals. You can see kind of shy shapes and we try to get a most uniform color between the wax play of the candles that we are doing. So now without further ado, we're going to have a few necessary basics where we have the duties of the bees versus their age. We have nurse bees, we have wax production bees, and we have foraging bees. These next couple of slides just kind of give a little depiction of the age descriptions of the bees. The first period when the bees are basically one to 10 days old, is a short period of self-grooming by the newly emerged bee. They clean the brood cells, they eat large amounts of pollen. They deposit masses of royal jelly in the base of the cells to feed the no new larva for approximately two and a half days. Feeding the older larva progressively until they reach five and a half days after hatching. The nature of the food is really not known. One larva requires a huge amount of visits and orientation flights then start. Second period, a period that we are most interested in where the bees from age 10 to 20 days secrete wax out of their wax glands. They accept nectar from the field bees, handling it and storing it. They pack pollen, they clean out dead bees and other refuse. A few bees take on guard duties and intercept other bees and other robbers. The third period, approximately 20 days until the bee dies, which they are foraging for nectar, pollen, water, and propolis. Some new foragers could return to housework. Summer bees live six to seven weeks. Winter bees could live for six to seven months. Again, back to our initial idea, where does beeswax come from? Of course, from the honeybees. Again, the wax production is by worker bees only. The drones do not produce any wax, only the worker bees. They have four pairs of wax glands that are located on the underside of their abdomen. They uh, have four pairs of glands there. Bees produce wax as they're resting quietly. Their bodies convert sugar into beeswax. The sugar content of the honey or syrup is the food that is needed for them to produce the wax. Pollen does nothing for wax production. The bee must be of the right age for the wax production. Again, as we showed in the earlier slide, bees that are 10 to 20 days old are the prime producers of beeswax. The wax glands treated through the liquid, as a liquid through the porous areas called mirrors in their abdomen. It hardens into small flakes in those wax pockets between the segments and the underside of the abdomen. The bee then transfers this wax scale using the last row of bristles on its first tarsal joint of her hind legs to her mouth and manipulates it with her mandibles, mixing it with some salivary secretions and kneading it into a softer form. 
That way the comb and wax cappings are then constructed from this softened wax. This is a couple pictures of the wax scales produced on the underside of, of the bees. You can see there are four pairs. Now, a lot of times when we get packaged bees, those of us that, that uh, have seen packaged bees, the bees that are in those packages are mostly very young nurse bees that are sold in the packages. We're getting good packages. And if you notice after a day, that those bees are in that package, especially while they're being transported, there will be a lot of very fine little glistening wax crystals, so to speak, on the screen and on the bottom of the cages. Those are just excess wax crystals that have been produced by the honeybees, and there's really no place to put them, so they are just scattered around the package cage. So, again, a little micro picture of the wax scales, just a very clear scale coming out from the underneath of the abdomen. Again, new wax is almost pure white when it's first produced. It takes on a lemon yellow color, darker color due to the addition of propolis or other natural products in the hive, such as honey, pollen, and pigments from pupil skins. As the beeswax ages in the colony, it changes color a little bit. Why we want the most pure beeswax as cappings wax from the frame that uh, the bees are making honey on and capping that wax. Again, the beeswax is an organic compound with an analysis showing over 300 individual components. That's one of the reasons why you can't go out and manufacture beeswax. It would cost a large fortune for some company to say, oh, we're just going to make beeswax. That's why we have um, oil-based products such as the uh, paraffin and other waxes that are produced out there, soy products and stuff like that, because there's nobody that can really come up with a good, cheap process to make actual beeswax. The white wax, as it is being constructed, you know, it has some little ragged wet, ragged edges on it, but it is pure white as it is first constructed. As the bees walk over it and they store honey and propolin and stuff like that in it, it will change color and it will get darker over time. But initially when you first put a blank foundation frame in a colony and they draw that wax out, if there's a good honey flow on, they will draw very pure white wax out. You have sufficient honey that they are eating, that are getting from to produce the beeswax. These couple pictures here are courtesy of Dr. Larry Connor. He has a picture of the bees resting. It is called festooning, where the bees don't actually sleep, but they do rest. And it is that resting period that they are producing those beeswax crystals on their abdomen. As they take those crystals and they manipulate them onto the comb, they pull them off their lower abdomen, manipulate them with their mouth parts and make the comb. As they continue storing honey, they continue adding wax and capping over the honey. As you can see here, they basically start from the outside edge and work towards the center until the honey is completely capped over. When the honey is the right moisture content of somewhere below 18% moisture content, then they will cap the honey over when it is so-called done. And as you can see here, the cappings are slightly raised. They are not right down on the honey. So when you look at a newly capped frame of honey, you will see that it will be mostly pure white. You have a good honey flow on and they're making new wax. They take that and put it over top of the cells. Now that gives us the most pure cappings wax that we get our nicest handle wax, 
lip balm wax and things like that from because this wax is not really touching the honey. It hasn't been traveled over a lot by the bees. If you leave this comb inside the hive for very long, as the bees travel over it, they deposit propolis and miscellaneous dirt, so to speak, over top of its wax and it will change color and get darker. So that when we want to get nice clean wax, we extract this honey as quick as possible once it's completely covered over. A few more pictures of the bees actively working. There's not just one or two bees that are processing wax. Some of the bees are putting honey into those cells. Other ones are adding wax to the cells as they go. You can see it's not always the most uniform looking pic, you know, picture as far as, as, far as the, the outside of the cells, but eventually it turns into a very nice uniform looking frame of honey. And again, this is almost done. Give it probably another three or four days and they will have the rest of all of this cap. And this will be an ideal frame to take out for extraction and you will cut off this nice clean wax that they have capped over with and you will get some nice capping from that. Some of the properties of the beeswax, we have the melting point of wax, 147.9 degrees Fahrenheit. It will get solid around 146 degrees as it cools off. Again, the density of beeswax, 0.963, which means that it is less dense than water. The density of water is 1.0. So with the density of le anything less than the density of water, it will float because it is actually lighter than water. Okay, now one of the items when we are making candles or other beeswax items, we need to remember that beeswax exhibits very little shrinkage roughly 10% shrinkage from 200 degrees down to 77 degrees. This is an important property that helps the wax to contract from the size of a mold as it cools. When you pour your wax into your mold, it contracts as it cools. That way it, it sucks in from the side of the mold, makes it easier for it to get taken out of the mold. One drawback of this is that the candle needs what we call topping off. Okay, once the wax is poured, it shrinks, and you have to just kind of keep up with, with it depending on the style of the candle or the design that you are making. You may have to top it off more than once. Another item that a lot of people say, well, gee, my, my candle looks funny after it's been sitting on my table. So that's what a product, product of the beeswax is. It's called bloom. It's just a dusty appearance on the surface of the beeswax. It just turns kind of cloudy. It's a chemical change in the structure of the surface molecules of the wax. You can make it go away by rubbing the wax with or candle with a soft cloth, or you can heat it gently. If it's a just a straight, like a taper candle, you can rub it with a soft cloth and the bloom goes away. It stays away for a little while. Or if it's a more intricate type of candle that has little nooks and crannies in it, you can take a hair dryer, blow dryer, and just warm, blow warm air against that candle and the bloom will disappear out of the milks or crannies, or it can be sprayed with some kind of a candle preservative. Wax sources, again, they're all from within the hive. Cappings are the best wax that we can use for making candles and stuff like that. You can, it's the, it's the most purest, whitest wax that you know, we use for candles, lip balms, soaps and lotions. You want nice white wax or that. You don't want dark, ugly looking wax to put in a lip balm or a hand lotion or something like that. So if you, you can also melt down combs, but in most cases, those combs already have a lot of debris in them and you don't get the very nice wax out of it. You can use hive scrapings, burr comb that is you know on the top of the frames or on your inner cover stuff like that you can use burr comb again you will not get nice wax cleanest wax again is going to be from the colmer cappings which no brood was ever produced 10 to 15 pounds of wax are produced for every thousand pounds of honey so you know a lot of times people will say well i'm going to make candles so i'm going to get myself a beehive so that i can make lots of candles well uh 
that's a uh, big figment of their imagination. They need a lot of candles, a lot of wax to make candles, and they need to produce a lot of honey to produce. First steps in rendering the wax, uh, we want to get as much honey out as possible. We want to warm and drain the cappings, use a capping spinner. Uh, we got to remember that cappings that are honey wet, so to speak, they will ferment. They can be subject to wax moths. So if you collect a bunch of wax cappings, you want to make sure that you stick them in a five gallon bucket or some other sealed container so that it doesn't get air in it and you won't be subject to wax moths coming and laying eggs on it. An alternate method is you can wash and drain and dry completely those cappings. The only problem is there is you have to remember that water wet cappings will mold very quickly. Even if you stick them in a bucket, they're, they're going to mold. So if you wash them and drain them out, you need to process those cappings very quickly in a, in a water bath to uh, get the wax out. You can continue to render, render the wax. You can use a wax press. You can use, uh, convert something like a old apple cider press. You can convert that and use that to press honey out of the wax. You can use a solar melter. There's many types of those. We have some pictures to follow. Uh, you want to make sure that they're bee tight because if you put wax cappings out in your backyard in a solar melter and those bees are in the mood to find honey, they're going to smell it out in your, in your uh, solar melter and you're going to have lots of bees around there. Cappings melters, there's many styles available. I like to use a double boiler where the water never touches the wax. Uh, there's commercial types that uh, have an infrared tube to heat the wax cappings up. You can use a water bath again as an alternate method where you can put the wax in bags, it'll float, the wax will float out and you can ladle off the, uh, the clean wax. The only problem you have to watch is if you have soft water, it will make a type of emulsion and the, uh, we call it spongy wax where if, you make candles out of that wax. A lot of times there basically there's some water molecules that are entrained within that wax. And when the candle is burning, it will go kind of, it will make noise and uh, so on. Uh, again, you want to filter the wax. Once you have it rendered, you want to filter it and continue processing it to get it as clean as possible. The pictures of some of the ways of rendering, you have solar melter, you have a commercial type wax melter with a water jacket on it. Uh, solar wax melters, there are many different types of those. Um, you can get high quality wax. A lot of times the sun helps bleach the wax a little bit. If it's a little bit darker, you will get lighter wax when you use a solar melter. There's all kinds of different kinds of solar melters, homemade designs, you can buy them. Some of them are cheap, some of them are expensive. You can move up to a water jacketed wax melter. Uh, where it just have a heated chamber underneath and that gets the wax hot and melts it out and it drains out into, into a bucket. And uh, then you need to continue working on filtering that wax later on to get some more of the goo out of it. This is a picture of a commercial melter that, that uh, people use. Uh, commercial guys, you know, they make lots of wax. You know, they have thousands of supers that they're extracting so they have plenty of wax. Anytime you're working with wax, just remember you can make a mess. So uh, if you're doing it in your kitchen, you better be careful. Uh, your wife might not be happy with you when you get done. Uh, Dave Howman, uh, he does it on his basement floor or in his honey house, basically. And, uh, you know, he's melting the wax and pouring into containers. Different types of filter media you can use. You can use paper towels, shop towels, cheesecloth, nylon, cloth, sweatshirts. My preferred method is the uh, shop towels, the blue shop towels. I like to use those and some paint strainers. This is part of my operation out on my patio. I use a uh, the burner from uh, my uh, turkey cooker and uh, double boiler. You go to uh, garage sale and pick yourself up old pots, pick them up cheap. Uh, you get your water boiling in here. You dump your wax cappings in here, and you take that off and strain it basically through a paint strainer. I use these uh, orange juice containers and uh, you can get some pretty nice wax and then you can continue to render it down to 
purify just a little bit more. This is another method that works very well. I have a couple of uh, these teapots. Basically, uh, I take rubber band, a double sheet of blue shop towels over the other pot. Uh, when you're done with in here, then you can pour it into your red solo cup and you can pop it out of there and you can store it this way until you're ready to use it or you can mix it, filter it down a little bit more. You might have a lighter color wax that you can mix with this and lighten the color up. Um, that's pretty much one of the methods that, uh, that I do use. And this is a little- This is a quick method. And this is the leftovers after it's done strained, even though it looked pretty nice and clean, there's still a lot of gook that uh, is still in that wax. You may want to do this several times to get everything out of your wax. And you will notice that each time you do this, the color of the wax will change a little bit and it will become lighter. Again, you want nice light colored wax, different various wax grades. You know, the, the target color that everybody likes is a nice, nice yellow but you have different different colors and grades of wax. The darker wax can be used for like polishes, boot polish, furniture polishes. Uh, a lot of times the, uh, the reenactors like make candles that they have in their little lanterns and stuff like that. And they like the darker wax because back in the day, you know, they didn't have a method of refining the wax and getting it pretty nice and yellow. They had comb that they melted down and they had wax about these colors here that uh, that's what they made the candles out of that they used. Okay, so now after all of that, what do we do with the wax? We can make candles, Christmas tree ornaments, lip balm, hand creams, polishes, do art, uh, woodworking, sell it to others. You know, woodworkers use it to uh, help put screws in. It makes the screws go easier. Again, with lip balm and hand creams, you want the lightest wax possible. Same thing with candles, Christmas tree ornaments. You could make them different colors. You could paint them and so on. Candle burning properties, when the candle burns, generally produces a white round flame, smokes the least of all candles, two times longer burn than paraffin. But remember that when we process the wax in a water bath, it can make the candles spurt because it has some water in the, in the wax. Again, just some finished products. You know, that was a uh, plate that we won the uh, Bee Culture Beeswax Award at EAPS a number of years ago. And again, my email address and phone number here. You can email me if you have questions or you can text me on my phone there. Other than that, if you have questions, you have the ability to reach me. Thank you very much. Enjoy the rest of your day.